What's up, guys? Welcome back to Dream a Little. I'm your host, Lo, and this is the podcast that will help you share and explain the caregiver little dynamic to your vanilla partner. Today's guest is Jake. This interview is different from what we normally do because Jake identifies solely as a little. So I thought that would be really interesting and really helpful for those of you guys out there who don't consider yourself switches like myself. I think you're really going to enjoy this episode, whether you've already opened up about your kink or you're waiting to, because we dive deep into how he shared his kink with a couple of close friends, as well as some significant others that he's been in serious relationships with. One of the things that I loved most about chatting with Jake was, first of all, his honesty and also his tips on timing. A lot of you guys have been asking me, when is the right time to open up? Is there a perfect time? Is there a best time? How is it too soon? How do I know it's too late? I don't want to spoil this for you because the advice that Jake gives is so good. So stay tuned to the end to find out what tips and tricks he has to give because I think it's going to be so helpful. During this episode, we also talked about how Jake started incorporating role play with his wife and how it has evolved since then. And honestly, I even learned a lot from this conversation, so I hope you enjoy it just as much as I did. If so, give me a shout out on Twitter and let me know. Jake mentions his social media at the end of this chat in case you'd like to get in touch with him. I know he's looking to meet some people in the community, so please feel free to reach out to him and thank him for sharing his story on the show. As always, I'll include all of his contact info in the episode summary on my website, www.thelittlelounge.com slash 86 download. That's www.thelittlelounge.com slash 86 download. And I'll be sure to link to that in the show notes. All right, let's get started. Hey, Jake, thank you so much for coming on the show. How are you doing today? Hey, Lo, I'm good. I'm so glad you decided to come on the show and share your experience because I know that you've had some success with introducing ABDL to your wife, right? Yes. Awesome. So if you could give us a little background, what do you identify as? Are you a switch? Or are you more of a daddy or ABDL? You know, there's all these terms. Um, I uh, definitely am not a switch, I think, or a daddy. I've kind of tried a little bit of that in the past and have not had much success or interest in it. Wow. Uh, so, so you I'm, are strictly little. Yeah. Wow. And, and I think fairly little. I usually identify as about like 18 months when I fully am, am in it. Okay. Wow. Okay. I think you're actually one of the first guests or guys that I've had on that is strictly a little. So that's really, really interesting. When did you realize you were into this? Oh, it's been forever. I know there are a lot of people that have a similar experience uh, from what I've, I've seen, but it's, you know, my earliest memories are in preschool and just being fascinated with diapers and wanting to be back in that experience. And I remember trying to get teachers to, to do that when I was a kid. And so it, it goes it's way been back. forever. Yeah. So, I, and as I grew older, it, it kind of evolved and morphed a little bit, you know, with me. Yeah. So do any of your friends or family members know about this side of you or do you mostly keep it to yourself? Definitely not family. I've tried to keep it to myself most of my life. There was a short period when I was a teenager that I expressed it to a few friends. And I think it was just trying to reach out to other people to see what kind of reactions I would get. And for the most part, it was just, you know, oh, okay. Uh, and kind of moving on from the subject. It, it never really evolved into anything more than that. So they were your close friends that you opened up to? Yeah, I still am very good friends with uh, with a few of them. And it's just not something we ever really talk about. And at this point in my life, I'm not interested in in sharing that with them at all it's a it's a part of my private life I totally totally understand that I'm not one to really go telling a bunch of my friends either so when you told your friends and they kind of had this I guess you would say neutral reaction to it they weren't like wow yeah. that's awesome or ew that's gross it's kind of uh, <laughs> mutual you know like oh okay that's that's cool do you think that seeing that reaction was good practice and kind of gave you a little bit more confidence versus someone who's never told anyone about this kink, like shared it with anyone and they've kept it to themselves their whole life. I think so. It's, it is the scariest thing in the world to do. And every time I said it, every time I would express it, my, my hope is that somebody would be like, 
oh, me too. I totally <laughs> understand where you're coming from. Like, and then you'd find out it was like this common thing. <laughs> oh man, I was, you know, in, in the deepest depths of my soul, I was hoping, but yeah. I knew it was not going to happen. Right. But it, it did help. I think over time sharing it, it never stops being scary. Yes, I totally agree. But having the experience of knowing nobody's going to, well, I, I have yet to have an experience where somebody was either disgusted by it or didn't want to speak to me anymore. That has never happened to me. And I think I'm very fortunate that way. But Yes. Okay. When you opened up to your wife, at the time she was your girlfriend, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And before that, had you opened up to a significant other or was she the first? No, I had opened up to several. And, oh. um yeah, it never really did. You know, I, I never really went anywhere with it, but it was something I shared and, and it kind of just stopped at that point. Okay. So if you don't mind me asking, how did you bring it up? It was, uh, especially with the first uh, few women that I dated, it was always a kind of a, all right, I need to sit this person down and brace them for this news I'm about to give them. And then, you know, being terrified myself, I'm sure it did not look good from their perspective. Like, what is this disaster he's about to tell me? <laughs> and and I shared it, and it was always probably a relief a little bit of what it was, but also a like, okay, we don't ever have to talk about this again. It's okay. Okay. So that, that was my experience. So never did anyone start implementing things with you. There, there was one, I had a girlfriend in college who, uh, she went out and bought a pacifier and, uh, she dressed up a little bit like a babysitter or, or something. And, and we role played a little bit, but it was, that was my first ever experience of any kind of tangible feeling of this, of being able to put my hands on something. And I didn't know what to do. I bet all. it was pretty <laughs> awesome at the time though. You're like, wow. I was, I was elated. <laughs> Oh no, I was, she surprised me with it too. So I was just like, I came in the door and she had it in her hand and, you know, it was everything, you know, everything I dreamed of, but I didn't know what to do at the time. And I also, it it was just very awkward between the two of us after just a few minutes. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's always awkward no matter what, because even if you're trying anything new for the first time, even if you're on a first date with someone, it's always a little awkward because you're getting acquainted, you're getting to know each other, you know, and same with your little side as well. You're like, how much is too much? I don't want to scare you off, you know? So how do we find that balance of, you know, introducing this in a way that's fun, but also not too out there? (laughs) Yeah. How far into the relationship were you with with this significant other and, you know, with other people? Do you generally have like a timeline that you follow or like, how do you know when it's the right time to bring it up? I think when I expressed that with this girl in college, it was only, it might have been two or three months in. She was very open-minded and and uh, I felt comfortable enough with her to share that with her. And so I, I mentioned it. She actually, she asked more questions than I think anyone in the past. So that helped. Yeah, a lot was for her to sh- to show some kind of an interest, and I I remember yeah saying okay, if I ever am ready to to tell this person that I love them, I cannot say that unless I have really expressed like every part of myself. Wow, I never really thought of it like that, but that is so awesome because that's actually showing that you really respect yourself too because you know and you understand that this is a part of you and something that you want in a relationship. Oh, yeah. And you've got to be honest. It takes a long time to get there. Yes, <laughs> yes, totally. When you say she asks a lot of questions, I think that's great too because it's a lot easier when someone's interested versus just being kind of a brick wall and maybe like some of your other girlfriends where they're like, okay, moving on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, honestly, there were some circumstances where I almost wish someone had been like, I am not interested in that at all. Please don't talk about it. At least I would have known where they stood. So having this complete open field of just, you know, of unknown was really, that's, I think is really difficult. When she was asking a lot of questions, was she coming from a place of curiosity or concern or both? It was curiosity. Okay. I feel like at that point, you know, when you were saying you could potentially fall with, in love with her she knew you enough to know that 
this wasn't anything bad, right? Like this wasn't anything dangerous or strange. I think, like I, I do remember she asked a question about like this, you know, where does this stem from? This has to come from trauma. I think uh, she she initially thought that okay, from what I know of of human psychology, this must have something to do with like trauma or like something in early childhood. And I had great parents and, you know, I had a great childhood and I never remember anything that would have caused it. It's just, it's there. Did you explain it to her just like that? Yeah. Simple. It's just part of who, it's just part of who I am. You know, it's part of who we are as, as ABDLs. And she believed you. Yeah. Uh, and she continued asking more questions and there's always, I'm sure a shred of, of doubt, you know, for somebody who can't really live in that experience. Yeah. Was it hard to answer some of the questions? No, I, I loved talking about it. It was refreshing. That's great. And you yeah. said she was open-minded. So what did you mean by that? She had interest in a lot of different um, kinks and, and uh, you know, nothing that we ever explored. It's hard to describe. I think the best way to say it is she had at one time mentioned she wanted to be a sex therapist. Okay. Which if you've ever seen, what is it? Meet the Fockers or yeah. Meet the Parents. <laughs> yes. There's one of the one of the parents is a sex therapist, and she works with all these elderly uh, couples on on ways to you know explore their sexuality. Right. And so, knowing that from her, I was more comfortable expressing it. I'm sure. Oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Completely, yeah. it's it's easier to open up to someone who is also kinky themselves or has a basic understanding of human sexuality and that it's not just all about the vanilla, right? Yeah. Okay, moving on to your current relationship with your wife. If you don't mind me asking, does she have her own little kinks and things or is she more to the vanilla side? Oh, she's she's very vanilla. Oh, she yeah, is? I mean, she, of course, is, is uh, she enjoys a lot, like any any attention I can give her. Yes. Uh, which I try and do as much as I can. But we've explored a little bit here and there, some really light S&M, uh, that kind of thing. But I would say she's she's very vanilla. And when you're in little space or when you're role playing, do you prefer it to be more like gentle, that kind of dynamic? Or do you prefer more of the hardcore, like bondage and all that kind of stuff? Uh, I'm definitely, I like it to be very gentle. Okay. I, I really, I explained it to her one time when when we were in the moment as, it feels like I'm just being wrapped up in love. Yes. And it's, it's really, it was hard to describe, but it's, that's how I, I enjoy it. Okay. So that's great. I think you really put it into terms that she could understand. So I know we were talking a little bit earlier, but I just wanted to fill everyone in who's listening. When you originally opened up to her, what was it, a couple years ago? Yeah, so uh, we've been married over a year, uh, and we've been together for it's been about three and a half, four years now. Yeah, and I I had known her for about four years before that too. So we had been longtime friends. She'd known me. We traveled a little bit together and done a lot of different things. And after about two months of dating, honestly, it was in within the first week. I I was sure that. I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. Aww. And so I wanted to break through that, you know, of, of letting her know about this side of myself fairly early on. So it was, it was about two months, which was two months of, of agony for me. I kind of set that date and I wanted it to be the right time, but I think it was in the end. Okay. So how did you bring it up? I think we were on a, her couch watching television and uh, we started to fool around and I got into uh, basically a nursing position. Yeah. And I remember in that moment, I was like, this is it. This is the moment. I have to say something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a sign. And, so I, and I told her, I told her, um, and I, I had known before that, I think through my experiences and from reading online and that I, you need to do it with confidence. You can't tell them to brace themselves. Um, you know, you've, you've just got to say, hey, this is. You know, this is something I really enjoy and, and uh, I really hope that, you know, you and I can share this together. Yes, absolutely. And so I told her, I was like, I'm, I'm what is called an, an adult baby and it is, uh, you know, this position that I'm in right now is about, you know, 
top tier for for where I like to be. Yeah. <laughs> and she was very accepting of it. She asked a few questions. Uh, we started to explore a little bit more into it. I had never gone out and and bought diapers or or pacifiers or anything like that. So we very slowly started to get a small collection of things and and eventually, yeah, it, it's kind of led up to some of the best moments of my life. Was she surprised when you told her? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> surprised or shocked? <laughs> or a little uh, bit surprised. of surprised. I I wouldn't say shocked. It's not something that I think someone would expect of me. It's it's a very different part of my life, and so I think there's definitely some surprise. It's the dichotomy, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like a lot of us in the community as well. Like we we really uh, make up for maybe subconsciously this kink by trying to like excel in our personal lives and we're very driven and confident. And so sometimes when yep. we open up about this, they're just like, what? Where's that coming from? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and when you say you slowly started introducing things, who initiated that? I'm really curious. It was, it was me. So from the point where I talked to her about it and first opened up, I, I started saying, okay, I'd I kind of like to explore this. Are you willing to to do this with me? Are you willing to go along with this? And she said, yeah. And so I, I think I went online and got my first like adult size pacifier and, you know, came home with it one day and, or it was in the mail. We opened it up. I was really excited and we played a little bit that night with it. You know, I, I don't think I regressed as much with it. it I think I kind of slowly brought that in over time of um, kind of really exploring into the little side of things. But yeah, it started with that. And then I think eventually I asked her, like, would it be okay if I bought diapers and and tried these too? And she said yes, and we tried them out. And, you know, I still don't have a giant collection of anything. It's, you know, I've I've got a few of those. And, like, I have one onesie and a few pacifiers. But uh, I feel like that's all you need, really. Exactly. Yeah. It's, I think she at one point expressed it. She was like, I'm a little worried. You keep getting a few things. It was in the beginning. <laughs> oh, she should see my collection. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, well, it, it could be way worse. Yeah. It really um, could. And that's, and that's something too, is, you know, I, I would love it if, if I had all this stuff, but at the same time, I kind of, you want to be know, respectful. I, I, yeah. I want to be respectful and I, I really do enjoy my life outside of, of this kink. Yes. So How did she adjust to the role? Because I know a lot of times, you know, people have this conversation. I feel like the hardest part is over, but sometimes like trying to explain exactly what you want or kind of coaching your partner into the role is a little bit tricky. Oh, that is still challenging. Okay. Um, She does an amazing job. I mean, she goes above and beyond more than I ever expected of anyone. Really? Yeah. And I think a lot of that is because of her and and who she is as a person. And we just communicate. We talk a lot about what what is working, what is not, what I like. If there are things I feel like she's uncomfortable with, I also try my best to ask a lot of questions and, and see where she's at. I give her a lot of outs. If you're not comfortable with this, we don't have to do this. I love that. Yeah. And so I think that helps. The hard part is... Once I say that, then, you know, even if I'm in little space, then I I do need to respect that and and back up a little bit, which sometimes is is challenging. Right. And, you know, it's not your favorite thing to do, but long term, it's it's the right thing to do, right? Exactly. Yeah. I, I think we have an amazing relationship and a lot of it has to do with just talking back and forth, asking questions and being extremely honest with one another. Yes. I think that's really, really key. And creating the space, it sounds like that's exactly what you did, saying it's okay to be uncomfortable and it's okay to yeah. tell me when you're uncomfortable and really demonstrating that, hey, this is not, I can turn this off at any point. It's a switch. It's yep. not not like I transform into this character and I can't get out. It's it's yep. it's a role that I'm playing. And And I think that both of us are learning that. Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, do you have any advice for any of the guys out there who are a little bit nervous to open up and they're not really sure how to bring up the topic or approach this? I feel like I'm still learning so much still. And so it's it's difficult for me to say, oh, you should do this and this. But I think the things that I've heard over and over from different sources, including your podcast, Lo, is, is take it slow. 
once you've opened up about it. I think that waiting really long time before you do talk to somebody about this, if you're in a relationship for six years or more before you say, hey, this is a part of who I am, can be really difficult. And when you first talk about it, don't be, don't be so scared that you make them feel like they should be. Yes. Um, be confident with enough to say, Hey, this is just, this is who I am. And, and I want you to be a part of this, you know, part of my life. Yeah. I think that's actually really important too, is extending an invite and asking them if they'd like to join versus just being like, this is what I want. And then that gives them a way to say, okay. And then nothing happens from it. Right. Yep. So you kind of propose the, the question, you invite them to be a part of it. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. How can people find you on social media? Oh, uh, well, I, I do have a Tumblr account. So my Tumblr name is a luck dragon. And then I'm also on a website called a disc and I've got a screen name there. Uh, it's little sweet tooth. It's exactly how it sounds. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jake, for sharing. I really enjoyed getting to know you better. It was great talking to you, Lo. Thanks so much for having me on. All right. Talk to you later. Have a good day. Bye. This episode was sponsored by Patreon. If you'd like to support this show while also getting cool rewards like early access to new episodes, one-on-one phone calls with me, and access to a community of like-minded people, check out patreon.com slash dreamalittle.com.